Okay, students, welcome to Chemistry 30. This is our first unit, Organic Chemistry, and this is Lesson 1. Uh, to begin Lesson 1, we're going to do a Chem 20 review, real fast, a flyby from the bonding unit. Hopefully it was one of your favorite units, but uh, a lot of students don't like the bonding unit. So, uh, let's talk about Lewis diagrams. There's Gilbert Newton Lewis. He invented these diagrams to help us out. So if I said to you, draw me a Lewis diagram, what would you draw? Well, watch this. Okay, so one time I asked the kids to draw Lewis diagrams. This awesome student gets up and starts drawing his face. And I loved it. Uh, we're not going to draw those kinds of Lewis diagrams. We have to use the ones on the right, unfortunately. Anyway, we'll carry on. Now remember... Um, on a periodic table, we have periods that go this way and groups that go this way. Uh, if I just deal with these top three periods, those are called the short periods. And we number those, group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now hydrogen happens to be in group number one. And when it's in group number one, that tells us that it has one electron in its outer level. So if I was to draw a Lewis diagram, I'd put an H with one dot. Good. Oxygen is found in group 6. So it has 6 electrons in its outer level, but we have to fill it out a certain way. So let's watch. So there's my 4, and now I go back around and I start doubling up. Alright, so there's oxygen's Lewis diagram. What about nitrogen's? Well, it's in group 5. So it has five bonding electrons, or, or five electrons, sorry. And carbon is in group four, so it has four electrons. Now, I just mentioned the word bonding electron. Watch this. There's these things called lone pairs. So these are lone pairs. They are not available for bonding. Okay, nor is this. It's a lone pair. But we do have these things called bonding electrons. Anywhere where you see a single electron, there, 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 all of those, those are bonding electrons. And those are sites available for bonding. Okay, so carbon, because it has four bonding electrons, has four dashes. Whereas oxygen has two lone pairs, not available for bonding, two bonding electrons, oxygen would look like that. Two bonding electrons. Okay. So, let's see if you can draw the correct structural formulas. That means, draw me a C, and then put the H's around it. A couple of quick rules. Um, the one with the most bonding electrons goes in the middle. So C goes in the middle, and then H's go around it. Okay? So uh, you can give that a try, and then if you watch the screen, you'll see my drawings. Ready? Okay, so you can see we're going to start with carbon, because it has the most bonding electrons at four. Hydrogens have one electron each. I'll put little X's sometimes, just so I can see the difference between... So I can see who owns the electrons. Anyway, now we erase those bonds and we put in the dashes. So there's a structural diagram. Nitrogen. Nitrogen has to go in the middle because it has the most bonding electrons. And then we put the hydrogens around it again, like so. <clears throat> and now we erase the bonds, the dots, and we put in the dashes. Here's a structural diagram for ammonia. Methanol would look like this. You have to start with the carbon in the middle. Four dashes. I'm not going to put the dots anymore because I can see how this works. CH3 and then O connected to H. And finally, ethanol. Two C's have to go together this time. Those are surrounded by five H's. C2, H5. And then I have an O and connected to that an H. C2H5OH. So, we've gone from the Lewis dot diagrams to structural diagrams. Okay, great. Now we'll move on to the rest of the lesson. Okay, let's talk about these things called intermolecular forces. Now, 
If you read here, an intermolecular force is the weak attraction between a momentary dipole in a molecule and the momentary dipoles in the surrounding molecules. Strength depends on the number of electrons. Okay. So here's a molecule. That's carbon with four H's. It's methane or natural gas. Remember, each hydrogen has an electron in its outer level, one bonding electron. And I don't know if you remember from back from Chem 20, but we talked about electronegativities. Carbon in the center has a stronger electronegativity than the H, so these electrons kind of get pulled closer towards carbon. And same with these. They get pulled a little closer because of carbon's stronger electronegativity. But the tug is equal both ways. And so we call the, oh, and here's what they would look like. Because the tug is equal both ways, um, you'll see kind of these the symmetrical shape. Everything's in balance. And we would call this a nonpolar molecule. Now, um, if I was to put two of those side by side, an intermolecular force is not this bond right here. It's the bond that forms between these two molecules. So a bond, will, a bond will form right there. We would call that an intermolecular bond, in this case a London dispersion bond. Anyway, um, it is a weak bond. It is quite weak. And that's why I say it's kind of like a thin little elastic band. It's not real strong compared to some of these other bonds we're going to talk about. All right, because it's not strong, the boiling points of these types of nonpolar molecules are quite low, negative 164 degrees Celsius. Now, if I added more carbons and hydrogens, the boiling point would go up a little. Anyway, moving on. Dipole forces. Now, if you compare this molecule to this one, we now have a bit of a difference. Instead of hydrogen right here, we have chlorine. Now, chlorine has way more electrons than hydrogen does. Hydrogen has one electron. Chlorine has 17 electrons. And it also has a stronger electronegativity. So it pulls electrons this way. Now, whereas these both pulled in opposite directions, this one has a pull over to the right here towards the chlorine. Now because of that, electrons can pile up over on this side. There's more electrons over on that side. And because of that, we get a charge over there. Now take a look where this was nice and symmetrical. Now you can see this big cloud here, right? It's that electron cloud. Now, uh, because of that, we have a partially negative charge that builds up here and a partially positive charge that builds up here. Now, when we have these negative and positive charges, we have a polar molecule. This is polar. Now, if I put them side by side, I've got a negative end here and a positive end here, and they form an attraction. They attract between these oppositely charged ends. And this is called a dipole-dipole bond. Now, notice I've made it quite a bit thicker than this bond, or stronger. I say it's kind of like this elastic band. And, as you might expect, the boiling point is quite a bit higher. It boils, instead of negative 164, a negative 23.8, which is low compared to, like, uh, water, which boils at 100. But this boils, and the only difference between this molecule and this one is that Cl with more electrons and a greater electronegativity causing an imbalance over on this side in terms of electrical charge. All right. Now there's these unusually strong bonds called hydrogen bonds. Now watch this. Look at, remember, I started with this molecule. We added a chlorine. And now we've just added an O and an H on this side. And you can see the shape here. You can see this, this shape here. Now, again, oxygen has a greater pull than carbon and hydrogen, so I've got to pull this way and this way. Electrons are coming towards that oxygen, making it very negative. And if that happens, I have a, a negative charge here and a positive charge here. Now, 
if these two molecules were to um, um, become close together, they would bond, but it would be a hydrogen bond. Now watch carefully. I'm going to rotate this one. All right, it's rotated. And now this bond forms between this O and this H. Now remember, these are actually intermolecular bonds. We're not worried about these bonds. We're worried about these bonds in between molecules. So this O and H doesn't mean this. It means this O connected to this H. Because this O is really negative on this one. And this H is positive. Now notice this this elastic band or this bond, which I've symbolized with this big thick red line, I think of it like those big blue broccoli elastic bands. Really, really strong bond, quite a bit higher boiling point. So take a look at the boiling point here. And remember, we're dealing with basically the same molecule with just this slight change on the right hand side here. Positive 64.7 degrees Celsius. So, if you remember from last year, you would remember some of these concepts that we talked about. Most students like the uh, like drawing the diagrams. They didn't really like uh, talking about partially negative and par positive charges and all that. Now, this is a polar molecule as well. Uh, water is polar, uh, has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius because it has a hydrogen bond. All right, we'll move on. Now, how do intermolecular forces affect the following? Well, we can have states of matter. Uh, the stronger the bonds between the molecules, the more dense the state of matter. So if you have a really, really strong bond, um, you can start forming solids instead of liquids or gases. Okay, okay. boiling point and melting points. Um, the stronger the bonds between the molecules, the more energy will be required to separate the molecules. So if you take this one with this thin little um, bond, this uh, London dispersion force versus this hydrogen bond, this one won't take very much heat to separate it. You start heating this up, it's going to snap. This one doesn't snap until way more heat has been added or energy has been added. And solubility. Okay, uh, solubility, we know that some substances dissolve into other substances. So the point here is like dissolves like. Polar substances dissolve in polar substances. Nonpolar dissolve in nonpolar. When you mix a polar with a nonpolar, they don't, they don't dissolve into each other. They form layers. Okay, now uh, molecular modeling. We're going to use modeling kits to visualize some of the things that we've talked about. Now you might have played with these last year, maybe not. Anyway, we'll move on.